Now, the three-month government ban on logging in all forests across the country is not only commendable, but should indeed have come a lot earlier. The consequences of the Dindling Forest cover call for serious national attention. Interestingly, the ban was announced by Deputy President William Bruto, who not long ago was involved in a public altercation over the conservation of the Mao Forest water tower. Then, Bruto robustly defended the invasion of the forest for cultivation, dismissing the well-founded notion that a major cause of the declining rainfall is the destruction of water towers. Kenya's forest cover is only 1.7% far below the recommended minimum of 10%. The DP has apparently had a rethink, having seen the devastation and with first-hand information from his vantage position. He has acknowledged that the water levels in, the, in major rivers continue to drop at alarming levels. The three months might not be enough to correct the damage, especially by illegal loggers, but it's a step in the right direction. The short moratorium should provide an opportunity for more appropriate measures. It's not worth it, therefore, that the National Assembly's Environment Committee is backing the ban. We agree with the committee on the need for an agency to carry out, or an agency to carry out an audit and chart the way forward. Of course, we want to introduce our panelists this morning to take us through these particular topics, uh, looking at the devastation of our forest and what remedial measures that should be taken forth. Of course, with that particular uh, ban that is, you know, moving along on three months. But is that enough? What will be the prime solution? And also looking at what is on the front page of the Delhi Nation as well this morning, as far as the judiciary is concerned, is there a revisit? Hunted man. Fight to sack Maraga, it says, begins action of a little known lawyer, whether acting or on his own motion or as the spearhead of powerful political forces, might have graph consequences for the judiciary and its freedom. And this story is continuing on page two of the Delhi Nation this morning. We want to begin there and following that particular story also of Mao Forest and what is happening as well. So this is where we're going to start with our panelists. Allow me to introduce our panelists this morning. We have with us Dr. Otende Amolo, who is a member of parliament from Rarieda. Also, we do have with us Dr. Boni Halwale, who is the deputy party leader of Ford Kenya. We do have with us also Aaron Cheriot, who is a senator from Kericho. We have Kimani Wamatangi, senator from Kiambu. And also, we have Jared Okello, who is a member of parliament for Enyando. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Right, let's just begin uh, with it. And of course, we want to welcome also Jared Okello on this panel as well. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank right. you very much. Let's just begin with what is on the front page of the Daily Nation. Right, right. since August uh, 2017, we saw what altercations were there between NAS and the Jubilee as far as the judiciary is concerned with that particular ruling that was... Uh, you know, taken to be very controversial. Of course, we had the nullification of uh, the presidential election and we went back to the ballot. But now seeing this particular headline this morning, what really comes up to your mind, Bona Halwale, first of all, because uh, we had the term revisit and we've seen people also speculating, could this man be, you know, a, a, a puppeteer, you know, being pushed, you know, to push an agenda or push certain envelope as far as the revisiting is concerned. Let's begin from there. I don't think there is any Kenyan who keeps himself abreast with current affairs who will be surprised with the, what is happening. Uh, unfortunately, the national psyche is these days being driven by uh, ethnic profiling. And therefore, people should not forget that uh, what this uh, uh, unknown lawyer is doing is simply revisiting what uh, Gunjiri, the member of parliament of Nyeri town, said earlier on. And therefore, because of uh, names tending to betray where Kenyans come from, this is purely a Mount Kenya initiative that is supposed to massage the ego of President Uhuru, who was very angry when Maraga ruled uh, against his stolen election of 8th of August 2017. All right, let, let's hear from Aaron Chiriot. Good morning. Well, good morning, Tibal. Uh, we must, uh, you know, the reason we have uh, certain clauses in our constitution is so that when you have moments like this where we feel uh, people who occupy very important public spaces like uh, CJ, David Maraga, and the rest. If we feel that there are certain things that they have done 
that do not uh, uphold the dignity of our country, then you can have uh, petitions like is being done by this gentleman called Adrian Kamodo Jenga. He shouldn't be victimized. He shouldn't be seen in the light that uh, uh, Boni Alwale would wish uh, him to see because he's just doing what is legally right. He has said there are certain things that I have noticed. I don't uh, appreciate of uh, the uh, CJ and certain members of uh, JSC. Yes. And he's done a petition to Parliament. We will listen, uh, I'm sure... Uh, I don't know if uh, Dr. Tiende is a member of uh, the JLAC. They'll get a chance to, to study through the petition. If it meets the threshold, then it will go to the full hearing and they'll guide the House or Parliament on what needs to be done. If it doesn't meet the threshold, then it will be thrown out. Mm -hmm. So I don't see uh, why Boni and uh, you should be quick to link this man to the leadership of Jubilee. You know, he could just be a decent Kenyan out there concerned about certain happenings within our 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 judicial system. Right. Concerns yeah, that yeah. even 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 Otiende Amolo has raised here on so many occasions that there are certain things with our judiciary he doesn't agree with. Mm -hmm. I'd wish to challenge him also to do a, pet, a, a similar petition on judges that he feel do not meet uh, the kind of criteria that is needed to uphold the office of a judge. All right, let's hear from Otiende. Uh, you are not a member of a JLAC, but a uh, public investment committee, I presume? Yes, public accounts committee. Uh, public I accounts am one committee. of those few members of parliament who only have one committee. What happened? Uh, because those in parliament who decide to put, put people in committees decided that I deserve one. All right. For and by they, the way, did, they didn't find it necessary to put me in JLAC. So I will make my comments here because I might not be able to make them there. Mm. Uh, first of all, <laughs> uh, first of all, yes. I agree with Dr. Halwale. This is an occasion of revisiting, as we were promised by the president. And it's a continuation of a certain process. If you look closely, you will not only find that uh, Ngunjiri Wambugu had made a similar uh, claim and petition, mm -hmm. you will find that this lawyer is not just a lawyer. He was a jubilee aspirant. You can therefore see where the motivation comes from. Mm -hmm. This is a continuation of a process that is on right now you will see that in the last 14 days, the president presented three names of new nominees to the Judicial Service Commission. Incidentally, that is Olive Mugenda, uh, Koske, and I think Gichohi. Also unconstitutionally, because the president is only allowed two names. But he presented three. He even presented one on behalf of the pub, uh, Public Service Commission. Wasn't Felix uh, Koske part of it as well? Uh, yeah, that's, that's Felix Koske. I've just mentioned oh, you his mentioned name. Yes, yes. Uh, interestingly, the president is supposed to appoint people who represent the public. Mm -hmm. He decided that out of the three, <coughs> two from one tribe and one from the other represents the entire public. But I think that what is happening is that they want that by the time these three land in JSC, they have engineered a reconstitution of JSC. Because when you want to deal with judges, it becomes difficult to deal with individual judges. So you want to deal with the body that handles judges. And I think that's what it is. But that said, this petition is dead on arrival. It is inconceived. It is not based on the Constitution, as Senator Chariot is trying to say, for a very simple reason. Let me give just three very quick ones. One, this petition targets Justice Muilo. Justice Muilo is not a member of the Judicial Service Commission mm -hmm. as Deputy Chief Justice. Secondly, this petition mentions the Chief Justice. You, as long as the Chief Justice remains Chief Justice by law, he or she is the chair of the Judicial Service Commission. Mm -hmm. So there is no way you can remove Justice Maraga as a commissioner in JSC and he remains the Chief Justice. Thirdly, all the persons who are mentioned, who are judges, <coughs> to initiate their removal, you can only do it under Article 251. But you must show that there is a serious breach of the Constitution. All the issues, and there are five grounds. All the issues that are mentioned here, none of them touch on an allegation that they breached the constitution. They touch on an issue that the petitioner thinks that they made this decision when they should have made the other. That's not breach of the constitution. But more fundamentally, under Article 168 of the constitution, a removal of any judge can only be initiated at the Judicial Service Commission, not at the National Assembly. No matter what the National Assembly does, no matter what JLAC does, it cannot initiate the removal of a judge under Article 168.2. Mm -hmm. And therefore, 
all this and the powers to petition parliament for any matter is under article 119 you can only petition parliament for what is within its jurisdiction removal of a judge is not within the jurisdiction of parliament so this whole petition is dead on arrival i don't think it's being presented mm -hmm. for its legality Thank you. it's being presented for its drama all right so we are we are hoping to see drama or yeah we are hoping to see also a uh, legal uh, discourse being, you know, uh, meted out on this. Let's hear from Jared. Well, thank you, Dibal. Uh, first, allow me to make a comment yes, about please. an event that I saw yesterday uh, where motorists were left stranded for, you know, hours on end uh, in Limuru. Now, people chose to deflate uh, motorists' cars, mm -hmm. uh, and, and that was very, very wrong. And for the first time in the history of this country, Article 37, which protects, uh, you know, demonstrations and picketing, was fully exercised by Jubilee. Mm -hmm. Not even a single police was sent to go and restore order. And you wonder whether uh, this law works uh, perfectly within central region uh, to the detriment of other regions within the Republic of Kenya. So yes. I think this is something that should be handled. Uh, people were demonstrating, yes, in line with the Constitution, mm -hmm. but if it reaches a point where destruction of property and, uh, you know, that unwarranted delay occasioned by deflation of tires yes. uh, is totally uh, unacceptable. So I think that is something that we needed to uh, talk about. Yes, thank you. Now, well, coming back to uh, the agenda of the day, it is true that uh, the same Article 37 gives people latitude to present petitions uh, before government agencies, and Parliament is one of them. Uh, and therefore, this uh, little known lawyer, who is now being used by Jubilee to perpetuate Jubilee agenda, stemming from what the President, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, did mention earlier, that these matters surrounding uh, judiciary must be revisited. And therefore, what happens now? It's not coincidental. This is something that the judiciary has been prepared for. This is something that the entire country has been waiting for. What we never knew is that they would use a little known uh, failure in the last elections uh, to push uh, this agenda. <coughs> but, you know, as my brother Utiende has ably stated, there are certain things that, does, that do not fall under the purview of parliament. The work of JSC is to hire and fire judges. That is their work, and that cannot be abrogated or relegated to any other commission, any other authority, any other agency. It is the work of JSC. And if indeed uh, this man who is being used uh, had cogent reasons as to why uh, these judges must pave way, then he ought to have presented evidence before JSC. Because really, uh, Justice Maraga is the president of JSC, but he's not above the law. If there are reasons as to why he should be subjected to scrutiny, then he will firstly excuse himself as the chair of JSC and allow the law to follow full course. And therefore, what this guy is doing is just a testament that Jubilee is hell-bent on muzzling the judiciary. Remember that a while back, they have refused to honor Mm -hmm. five court orders, up to and including reopening this particular uh, TV station. Yes. Five in a row. And they are not bothered about it. And even look at the officials who are behind uh, this, you know, uh, negation of, uh, of the Constitution mm -hmm. as regards contempt of court. They're just ro roaming on the streets without any action taken against them. So I think this is a concerted effort to muzzle uh, completely the judiciary so that even if it means Uhuru Kenyatta suspending the constitution and allowing himself to run a third term because I see his friends are doing that all across East Africa then I think this is uh, one way but I think as a nation we will not allow uh, this kind of uh, uh, you know interference with the independence of the judiciary because you look at what is happening in the country it is only the judiciary that still stands, although on a, on, a, on a quicksand, but at least it is there to interpret the law as it should be. Thank you. The executive is rogue. Uh, you go to parliament, there is nothing to write home about. If we allow the judiciary also to take the same route, 
that Jubilee is perpetuating, mm -hmm. then the people of this country must therefore prepare Thank you, for disaster. All right, let's say from Watangi. We thought also the move uh, on uh, October the 26th that was from the judiciary, you know, uh, taking us back to the ballot and the presidency, of course, uh, taking it again, that will have mollified or maybe that will have also pacified this judiciary visit that we are now uh, talking about. Why are we here again? <laughs> I think, uh, Dival, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say good morning to our viewers also. <laughs> well, uh, I think, uh, well, I mean, this debate, Dival, that we're having this morning, uh, let me call it insincere. Insincere. Very insincere. It is, it is intended to, 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 to Insin advance. Insincere, insincere from the papers, insincere from the panelists. Yeah, I mean, v v very much for the way it's portrayed, one from the papers, uh, the perception that it is supposed to give, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the, 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 the line of thought, and uh, let me call it the storyline that is intended to be created by this story is, is, is a fake. Is a complete fake. I mean, the, n n nothing stands together with the other. It, it, it falls apart at, at, at the scrutiny of a serious person. I mean, w w what are we saying, uh, Dibal, here? Uh, why, 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 for goodness sake, would a petition by and one of our panelists here have described him as a little known lawyer? Why would a petition uh, of that nature become headlines that are headed? that Maraga is a hunted man. And Otiende Amolo has said very, very clearly, indeed, that, <laughs> that uh, Justice Maraga is a member of the JSC by virtue of being the Chief Justice. And, and ask yourself with basic intelligence, which comes before which? You know, you know, Justice Maraga does not have to hold his job because he's a member of JSC. He was, he, he, was, he was the chief justice first. He was appointed chief justice, then became a member of the JSC. It is not a precondition <coughs> for him to be a member of the JSC to be a chief justice. It, it is the reverse. And, and, and two, also, ask yourself, who, who, who says, who, who, who is trying to demean all these other Kenyans who hold pos positions of respect that they are lesser members of the JSC. Yeah, I mean, we have people like, uh, uh, l l like uh, Justice Wasame, the re Registrar, Amadi. H why are they lesser members of, 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 of the JSC such that such a petition only is viewed mm -hmm. in the light of the fact it is targeting uh, Maraga? Uh, secondly, uh, if you look at this petition and the, and the time when it has come, you would want to ask yourself, mm -hmm. you have got four outgoing commissioners, of the ones that I mentioned there. And, and uh, Otiende Amolo there correctly and, and uh, but very cheekily says that, uh, that at the appointments of two people from the same community, not, not forgetting conveniently that they are existing <laughs> already, uh, two members of the same community of the, the, the remainder. <laughs> That's like, you know, Minde and Ojienda. I mean, but, but this is not the way we should look at it. And, and, and I want to, to say that uh, if you looked at the headline, uh, Dibal, on the star, in fact, it, it's a little bit, it says Maraga team. But, but uh, here in uh, our good paper here that, <laughs> that, 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 that hosts us every day, it says hey, that careful, Maraga careful. is a hunted man. Ca careful. Y y you know, <laughs> but, but I tell you, you know, this, this, this must, be, uh, must be seen for what it is. Really, it is a petition that has been brought. This man says very clearly that he has got issues, that he thinks that the Constitution has not been uh, followed uh, to the letter by these individuals. Why, why, why would you want to advance a case that, that any Kenyan who thinks that he would want to to hear answers from the JSC Thank you. We, we would uh, be only aiming at removing uh, Justice Maranga. Uh, lastly, I want to tell my colleagues here that uh, you know, if, if we continue to lose ourselves in this old story, that, uh, that, that uh, because of the elections, that there are people who are being hunted, you are lost. We are really very keen and intent on building strong institutions in this country and ensuring 
ensuring that the agenda Thank of you. Jubilee will be realized by ensuring that everybody who should be in place is in place, right, including the judiciary. All right, let, yes. let, me, let me just give this an opportunity to Jared, who is actually uh, standing on the list to say something before we take a short break. Very briefly. Well, uh, we, we, we shouldn't, uh, you know, s uh, swipe all this under the, the, the rags. Uh, Jubilee, uh, with its dictatorial tendencies, is known. This issue is going before JLAC. It will hence be presented before Parliament and the tyranny of numbers will be exercised. And therefore, we only wait to see whether the decision or deliberations that shall hence uh, emanate from Parliament shall be binding on anyone. Because as the law states, Parliament doesn't have any obligation, any role to play as regards appointment of judges. Secondly, and this is critical, Dr. Tiende has alluded to uh, Uhuru Kenyatta appointing two from his key, uh, clan. Uh, two, 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 uh, two lawyers, uh, I mean two gentlemen and a lady uh, from his clan to represent JSE. And he has also, you know, focused attention on Professor Gender and Uminde. I want to remind him that Professor Gender was subjected to an election uh, through LSK to come to uh, JSC. And the same applied with Ominde, and uh, when magistrates and judges voted her in. So these are not presidential appointments uh, that uh, Dr. Tiende was talking about. So I think that is also important to be, uh, to be let know. I also thought that the, the duo, you know, the, um, sandwich between Jubilee adherents, I thought they were also going to tell us the reasons as to why the president has overstepped his mandate by so nominating three instead of two which should be constitutional, but they have scattered around this issue. All right, thank you. Well, well, All right, no, 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 we, we'll, we'll, we will revisit. It's, 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 we, we shall revisit, revisit. We shall revisit <laughs> after the break. <laughs> You're watching People and Politics, and I'm holding court this morning with Dr. Boni Halwale, who is the deputy leader of Ford Kenya. Also, we do have with us Dr. Otende Amolo, who is a member of parliament from Rarieda. We do have with us as well Aaron Cheriot, senator from Kericho. Also, we do have Jared Okello, member of parliament from Nyando, and Senator Kimano Matangi who is a senator from Kiambu as well. Let's just continue with the discussion. We promised to circle back with this issue. And I see uh, I actually interrupted you, Kimano Matangi. No, no, I, no, I think he, he can't have a second go before he, we respond to what before he said. Before we respond. Yes, he respond to what he said first. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, first of all, my friend Kimano Matangi has perfected this art of denying the obvious, then reframing the question and saying nothing. He says this debate is insincere. So I do not know whether he means the petitioner is insincere. I do not know whether he means those who reported the story are insincere. I do not know whether he means our analysis is insincere. And at the end of the day, we don't know whether he's agreeing with us that this petition is misplaced or not. Let me assume in his favor that he's agreeing with us. Because if he wasn't, then he would wonder what he was talking about. Just two quick things. The first one. Uh, uh, Jared Ukel already said, it is important to make a distinction between elected representative of the JSC and appointed representatives. The second thing that it is important to note, and this is not about reducing every conversation to a tribal angle. Yes. It is important to note that in one sweep, in exactly one week, mm -hmm. the president has already uh, basically, essentially, introduced four new members of JSC. Of those four, because we've talked about three, and then there's the Attorney General, who's automatically a member. It is important to always look back that when you have the opportunity to appoint, you must always fall back on the Constitution and ask yourself the general question, um, does it represent the ethnic and regional balance of this country? Because it is important. Mm -hmm. It is easy, and one can be forgiven for seeing, that the new entrants are predominantly from two communities. Those who are sought to be removed are predominantly from two communities who are elected. And therefore, one can be forgiven for, for saying that this is an effort to introduce in JSC what we've seen in many other public bodies. But that's not what I want to talk about. Allow me to say one thing. In this one week, we've seen impunity, and that's where Jared Kelo left. You've reported this on page eight, the question of Limuru. I think what's important is that unlike if this demonstration was in Kisumu or Mombasa or elsewhere, you had this marauding gang deflating tires and all. Not a single tear gas was thrown, the way they usually throw it at us. Not a single bullet was fired. But on page nine of your papers, there's yet another story. 300 riders ride all the way from Me Muranga to Meru, mm -hmm. chase away the police, kill a rider, 
and nothing happens. Not a single arrest, not a single tear gas. You know, you see this differential treatment of citizens when they're exercising their rights. And it's unbelievable. Uh, in truth, for me, it's been a very eventful week in terms of impunity. There are so many acts of impunity. That is just one. The other act of impunity you reported on, you will see that uh, there was an order by Deputy President Ruto on uh, Mao Forest. Yes. We will revisit it. But the question of impunity is, where does D.P. <coughs> Ruto get the powers to make any order? He has no such powers under the Constitution. In fact, the only person with powers is the President, who, under Article 135, must still put in writing anything he orders. The other act of impunity, I mean, there are so many. There's this question of, um, of Nyachae being appointed. My friend Nyachae is a good friend of mine. But you will see he was appointed to the East African Court of Justice in two days against the advice of the Judicial Service Commission. Another act of, there are like 10 or 12 acts of impunity. So it just shows you where we are going. And I think sometimes when we discuss these subjects, Thank you. rather than focus on the individual, we should focus on the trend of impunity. Thank you. Let's hear from Boni Halwale. Uh, I want to caution my friends here, who fortunately are all in Parliament, that led by Brother Otiende, you want to downplay this matter. I agree with you, it looks dramatic. But it is momentous. It is monumental to the extent that Kenyans know that Jubilee members of parliament, in the past, they have behaved foolishly. They be behaved foolishly when they passed the security amendment laws. They behaved foolishly when they passed the Electoral Laws Amendment Bill. And therefore, there's nothing that will stop them from being foolish again to pass this thing. And because of the impunity of the president, that thing will be effected. So you must roll up your sleeves, okelo, otiende, and fight for the Kenyans who have no opportunity to sit and speak from that platform we occupy today. But uh, now, the, 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 the tyranny of the numbers also is a tripping wire for them. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Uh, you said it. But then uh, let me just follow it quickly with uh, the Judicial Service Commission. We all know that the Kenyan parliament is under capture by the executive. Now, the president wants also to capture the judiciary. The moment this happens, then the country will be under state capture. And the impunity, the crackdown, and all manner of bad things that we are seeing today, they are all going to increase. Finally, uh, Okelo and Omolo, you have spoken to the issue of what happened in Limuru and uh, why the police did not take anything. I think my comment can only be one. I wish good people, good people, like Kimani Matangi and Senator Jerry Yod, would remember the good old days when you read the little book in high school, The Animal Farm. Today we now realize that some animals are more equal than others. If during our peaceful demonstration, little children were shot dead, how would you not disarm, arrest, or if you have, you, are, you, you, you have a knack for killing people, deal with criminals who are actually destroying property by dint of deflating tires of motor vehicles? Let me tell you, Chariot, avoid you still have time now. Avoid creating a reputation for yourself. Members of parliament from the Rift Valley have created a reputation and have been with them long enough, for years and years, of being psychophants. <laughs> Don't be a psychophant on this one. Be yourself. See where it got you when you were psychophants over the mouth. Now you are crying, you are saying, oh, the country help us, there is no rain, our rivers are dry. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let's hear from you. Know, uh, 
Dibal. Moila ya babu. One of the golden rules that you have created for us in this uh, panel and we, we so strongly try to adhere to is a discipline to keep quiet when your colleagues are making their points unrealistic and uh, <coughs> you know i don't want to use an extremely harsh word as i may be you, you hold you hold your horses until uh, you know jared is still new so you can i, I, can, <laughs> I can i can i can understand where he, he's coming from when i was new like him he's still I warming up he's yeah. still warming, warming up i used to interject when other people are speaking that's why that's why i allowed boni halwale to mislead the country and say you know uh dibal it is really wrong for boni to say that every time we exercise our democratic right in parliament and vote that we are acting foolishly it's only because we are on a tv and not in parliament otherwise he would not have been allowed to use uh, such language and it's unfortunate boni that you choose to use such a word <coughs> because what you force us then is to reply with the same kind of vitriol which i don't want to do this morning you know let us first debunk uh, this this theory debunk of tyranny of numbers how is tyranny acquired it is not a number that is picked we are not presidential appointees we are people voted in by kenyans when there is a motion when there is a petition when there is a bill that i'm supposed to vote in in parliament i vote on it based on the interest of the people that i represent mm -hmm. and so in the three uh, instances that uh, boni halwale has mentioned if the the, the way that I, I voted is a representative of how the people i represent wanted me to vote what is foolish about that and if he wants to consider that to be foolish then so be it so let us not come here and try to demonize a properly acquired majority in parliament and make it as if it is a crime it is not a crime kenyans went to an election all political parties including boni alwale's small political party that commands a small corner of the country presented candidates for election and after the election you have the numbers that you have today in parliament so there's nothing wrong about it all right however yes. on this issue of the petition I still reiterate my point that I made and I wish Dr. Otiende had listened to me keenly when I presented my points because the point that I said was this is a petition that has come to parliament. Parliament on a daily basis receives thousands and thousands of petitions from different Kenyans. Boni Halwale here knows that even last parliament we received a petition from someone who wanted us to legalize marijuana and stop its ban. It is upon us as parliamentarians and the instruments of parliament to advise these Kenyans and tell them when you have such a petition, this is where you take it. And there's nothing illegal about what this lawyer has done. Are we now demonizing? Are you saying that tomorrow, uh, Dr. Otiende, when a petitioner from Bradieda has an issue and they wrongly address it to parliament as opposed to maybe taking it to NEMA or any other government body, we should dismiss it and, uh, uh, and call them the sort of names that you're calling. Let us be good people. Let us be honorable. This gentleman has laid grounds that he feels in his opinion needs to be considered. I'm sure... JLAC will give him the, the due advice. And on this uh, issue of imp impunity, how I wish that Dr. Otiende Amolo would speak with the same vigor and energy when instances of impunity within the circles of opposition are reported. Take We've it. come here on this show with him on so many occasions. <coughs> when <coughs> supporters... <coughs> one second. When supporters... <laughs> you know, he, just continue. he will learn. He will learn slowly. <laughs> When supporters of opposition have committed acts of impunity, All right, thank you. but Dr. Otiendo has never spoken about oh, it. Uh, yeah, let's hear from Jared, then we wind up uh, with uh, Kimano Masani. Yeah, yeah, Honorable, uh, yes, honor, right. honor, yeah, well, he's coming to you, he's coming to oh, you. Oh, okay, 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 okay let me, uh, yeah, he's right, actually, okay, you did speak. It was my chance, uh, yeah. you, you said because he's... We will he's finish with Jared. Not you, welcome you, a guest you, in a show. You, you, you said because... <laughs> no, you talk about discipline. You, 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 you <laughs> welcome too much. <laughs> you know, Dubai, okay, continue, Masangi. Please caution this so <laughs> when, you, when you are a mono, <laughs> you must you must you must behave yourself. <laughs> Otherwise, they are going to monolize you here. <laughs> okay, what I <laughs> anyway, Dival, you know, I just very quickly you get a, your chance to say all the many lies <laughs> that NASA <laughs> says. I know, I know they they bond deal with a lot of them on your way, but uh, I just wanted to ask. I wanted to ask. Uh, <laughs> Bonnie Halwale, you know, but I have a lot of, you know, we, we respect each other, we've been in the same house, but, you know, we've not spoken for long, so I wanted to know, since the elections, who have you been? <laughs> I mean, you, you, you can't possibly be either speaking, that you are speaking, or forgetting as fast as you're forgetting, uh, uh, bullfighter, 
or have you been fighting bulls head on yourself? Remember, who are you castigating for being either a psychophant or, or, or even uh, you said you believe members have misbehaved themselves? And you, sp you spoke specifically on amendment of the election laws. Boni Halwale, you are forgetting you are a member of that committee yourself. Actually, so many times on this show, when you came here, the ball and uh, Jakoyo Midiwo had to rain it on you, saying that you are part of the team that did a terrible job for us to go and, and, and uh, correct back again in parliament. And so, uh, on the question of, of laws or bills passed, you have been a member of parliament, there is no one time, even when bills have passed, when you're sitting there, you have an opportunity, even as a member of the opposition, to voice your position to it. So which ones have you, have you voiced opposition? But I wanted to remind you that you are a member of the team that was chosen to amend those laws. Now, secondly, uh, I want to confirm to Otiende Amor that I was talking about insincerity as far as the representation and analysis of this uh, theory that has been created here about that petition is concerned. It is insincere. It is intended just to portray, you know, a certain uh, a certain angle that, that a small petition or a petition that probably would be even inconsequential in my thinking because you're petitioning people who have left office probably uh, is, is, is supposed to be magnified to, to, to interpret that it is a quest to remove uh, the Chief Justice. It is not. Now lastly, uh, we, you know a lot has been said about this incident in, in Lemuru yesterday. And, and you know, sometimes I, I ask myself, does, does hate go that far, such that even as you address the incidents of yesterday, I have not had a single member of this panel at any one time castigating or even commenting or lamenting that the utterances of an elected leader in this country led to the loss of property, <laughs> that, that somebody's truck was burnt down out of reckless comments. So, so, so even as you make another comments, uh, is, is it, is it <coughs> that, that, that hateful that, that you would even not want to comment that, that, that there has been losses, that, that those people who are agitating were agitating because of a cause, and then talk about the rest. I mean, I mean uh, it is a Kenyan. Who lost his property? And, and you know, I had Kalonzo Musioka uh, comment there when accompanied by, by Ngilu on that clip you're you, you playing. And you know, Kalonzo is saying that uh, go and tell you and who and who that uh, Chaco banned. You know, Chaco is banned by locals, not by transporters. It is the local people mm -hmm. who, who, who ban Chaco. And we'll delve into this thing more because I, I hope we are coming to the yeah, we're coming. We, we need that, to wind that, up. that you brought on, on, on the mouth. Thank you. I have comments that I want to make serious comments Thank you. on it. Right. Let, let's uh, just close up this particular topic of a judiciary revisit with you, uh, Jared. Very briefly, we move on to Mao. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, my two friends here must commit that they will respect my opinion, uh, firstly as a guest and second as a honorable member. And they will not interrupt as he has already begun. Then we now, shall, we shall uh, do the let action me, later. Let me firstly buttress uh, <laughs> Honorable uh, Dr. Halwale's point. Mm -hmm. When he talked about psychophants in regards to Mao, which is a huge topic we are coming into, mm -hmm. but at some point people said that, you know, rain does not come from the forests, it comes from the skies. And the, an entire community rallied behind that sentiment. What is the best description of psychophants if that is not one? Secondly, and this is most <laughs> important, you realize that uh, as NASA, each time Jubilee wants to exercise their tyrannical rule in parliament and at the executive, we have graciously chickened out, not to be party mm -hmm. to their advances. Because you realize that whether we participate or not, exercising that tyranny, they would still have to carry the day. And this has been consistent uh, in so many things. You remember that Jubilee is the very first cabinet in the history of the modern day politics mm -hmm. that a school dropout at the very uh, mundane levels can ascend to the position of a cabinet minister. And you wonder how transactions shall be carried out in that cabinet. So these are critical issues that we cannot just sweep under the carpet as they would wish uh, us to do. Now, courts of law are the last call. Each time a country is in a crisis,
people would quickly run to, uh, to a court of law. It is the only panacea to addressing dictatorial tendencies from Jubilee and any other government that, uh, re that uh, has disrespect uh, to the rule of law. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> only Muru uh, and my brother has uh, ably tried to defend the Limuru saga. Firstly, this lorry was not burnt in Limuru. The lorry was burned somewhere in Ukambani, in Kitui. Mm -hmm. And therefore, how do you then connect a demonstration in Limuru to an incident that occurred in Kitui? Are they so fearful that they cannot confront uh, people from Kitui? Because if it happened in Kisumu, uh, and the event actually happened in Kerecho, we will go from Kisumu and ask fundamental questions. So how do you then subject uh, a motorist to such kind of disorder? to an event that is not even related okay. uh, to that particular place. Uh, and finally, remember, in my constituency just last week, I buried three people. And these were peaceful demonstrators demanding for the return of their son, Dr. Miguna Miguna. Three, two of whom are secondary school students, donning uniforms from school and felled by the barrel of the bullet. So these are not simple things that we can quickly... So when we say that Limuru's event ought to have been handled with force, such as the ones happening in Kisumu and any other place, we mean business. Thank you.